Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and I have an alumni from Friday the 13th, Part 4, the final chapter. I have uh, Eric Anderson, and he played uh, Rob Dyer in Friday the 13th, Part 4. Hey, Eric, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, Scotty? I'm doing great, doing great. It's uh, been a long day, but uh, it's, what a way to end it. It's going to be a great way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, so the first, uh, yeah, yep. good. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. The first way to, uh, the first question I have for you is not related to Friday the 13th, but it's how did you get your start into acting? Uh, you know, I started as a, I was probably in some elementary school productions. I think I played Benjamin Franklin in something, but, uh, I actually was a high school. I acted in high school and was, um, you know, I did all the theater stuff and in high school in the era that I went to high school, we had a fully decked out theater and, and it was a, at a public school in California. And, and, uh, you know, we took our, took things very seriously. We I entered a lot of competitions and, uh, we did really well in those competitions. I, one year, um, I, I, I have a, some trophy, I think back in some closet somewhere where I won a best supporting actor role in some countywide competition, and uh, the actress that year who won that same award was Annette Benning. So that was uh, that was pretty funny. I grew up in uh, <laughs> southern, southern San Diego County, uh, a town called Chula Vista, which is right on the Mexican border. And so then I uh, decided that uh, there wasn't much of a future in that, um, just because it seemed, you know, I was down there in Chula Vista. I was I didn't know anything or anybody or any of that stuff. And so I went to college. And uh, at University of California, Santa Barbara, I got a degree in biochemistry and molecular biology. I went to go work at uh, USC School of Medicine in the Department of Virology for a while. And um, I kept thinking, boy, I hate this. I hate everything about my life. I, I really wanted to get back to the thing that I love. But it took me a while. It took me about uh, two years. I uh, worked, uh, went to work at Hughes Aircraft and worked on the, the laser rangefinder for the, uh, the M1A1 tank. Um, I went to work after that at Northrop Grumman and worked on the stealth technology that became the stealth bomber. And then I went to work at uh, Magnavox Government Electronics and was part of the original GPS team there. And then in 1980, Congress voted zero funding to GPS. And I found that a great opportunity to have them lay me off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was already up in L.A. taking acting classes and kind of fumbling around. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was taking classes that I read about, like in a magazine or something like that. And they were the worst classes you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually someone clued me into a good teacher. I went to that teacher, and, and then I eventually I, I quit this job at Magnavox. I got a job waiting tables at a restaurant here in Los Angeles. Then uh, I met some other people, and then I that acting class, some of those people started to get work. And then uh, suddenly there I was one day auditioning for a play on Melrose Avenue, actually. Um, and I... I um, played a, uh, a character in a play called Creeps, where I played a man with terrible policy. And from that moment, uh, I had agents and managers asking to represent me. And after that, it was a very short period of time I started uh, working professionally. And uh, my first feature that was ever released was Friday the 13th, Part 4. That's I awesome. did two other movies before that, but neither one of them ever got released. That's awesome. That's and awesome. I, and I was doing a television series at the time that I was doing Friday the 13th Part 4, where I played an over-the-hill baseball pitcher, and um, I had a mustache. And so when I went into audition for it, Friday the 13th Part 4, Joe Zito, I had the mustache, and Joe Zito says, well, would you shave that? And I said, yeah. So I shaved it for the for that movie, and then I, when I went back into the TV series, I had to put a fake one on me. It looked really bad. <laughs> it looked horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's really what it was and then since then you know it was there was it was a little more fits and starts i suppose at the very beginning and then it became i became a very consistent professional journeyman actor i've done 300 episodes of television and now 25 some 30 movies and and i've done 
maybe 50 stage productions and and uh and that's just i'm that guy i'm the guy that you that everyone that i run into that recognizes me in some way goes did i did i go to high school with you <laughs> they, they don't know what it's from you know but right. they they that that's that's where the recognition comes from except for the star trek people because i did one episode of the next generation mm-hmm. and uh those people know me my character the episode number that i did and uh <laughs> most of my most, most of my dialogue as well yeah they're, they're hard, diehard fans so what was your uh, actual death scene supposed to be um you know it was they had the, all the appliances he had tom had all these appliances with um these three-pronged gardening harrows with blood shooting out of them mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And, and there were supposed to be close-ups of me being my, the script says, flesh being ripped away from my face. And mm. and, it, and and Joe just decided that it was going to be a much longer sequence than normal, right. than the normal death, in fact, and, and that it was going to be more psychological than it was going to be physical. Right. He wanted a psychological turn. He wanted to remove me from the movie or from the storyline, right at the point where the only two people that would be left would be Trish and Tommy. Right. And uh, and um, that's what I mean about Joe. I mean, Joe had a very, and I'm sure that Barney Cohen, who wrote the script, that they, that they talked about it. I don't know if that Barney Cohen ever existed, by the way. <laughs> I always question, I never met him, and I always question Joe. I said, you know, Right here, I feel like that something should be different here. And he said, "Let me talk to Barney." <laughs> and, and then he would come back to me and he would say, "Yeah, Barney says that's okay. We can do that." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, great." And I go, "Can I talk to Barney?" He goes, "No." no. And I said, "There is no Barney, right?" Uh, so this one's more of a kind of a yes or no type question. Uh, I don't know if you know all the semantics that go into it, um, but um, I'm assuming the body that was thrown through the window was a dummy. Can you confirm or, den- or deny this? No, no, no. That's a stunt man. That was a stunt man. That, oh, okay. Uh, and that was a very, there was a compli- very complicated stunt. I forget who the guy was, but very complicated stunt. And the distance between um, the window and the back wall, that was a big point of discussion about whether he could. So what they do is they put his, they put his body on what's called an air ram. I think it's called an air ram, okay. which is like a catapult. They put, he stands on a catapult. All right. And then they blow that catapult, and he flies through the window that's made of, you know, sugar, sponge sugar, or whatever <laughs> the f- fake glass is. Yeah. And then they put padding on the other end of the wall because they're afraid that he would be fly at such a, a velocity that he would smash into the other side of the wall. <laughs> so they put mattresses up over there, but it was incumbent upon him to actually hit the window in a straight position. And then twist his body. So, so the last question I have for you um, is: Do you have any projects, uh, gigs, or anything else that you would like to promote to our listeners? No, I, I did this. Uh, did a couple of episodes. I just right now I just do stuff for friends, basically. Okay. Um, I did uh, I don't know six episodes of the that, the series Bosch on Amazon because I had friends who were working on that. Okay. I think I have. I think I did six episodes, and I think there's one scene in each of the episodes that I did. So there's six scenes in, in seasons five, four and five, maybe, of Bosch. Okay. Uh, but that was fun. I like Titus. He's a great guy. We, we had a good time. And, and then um, I just did a, another friend of mine called me and said um, he's doing a series for CBS streaming called Interrogation mm-hmm. with uh, Peter Sarsgaard, who is just a fucking prince. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's uh, fine. <laughs> uh, and uh, and I really enjoyed hanging out with him and, and David Strathairn and, and some people, and I just did a couple episodes of that. But I, I am not, I'm not, uh, I may go back to the theater someday is really what I want to do, which is where I started. Okay. I, I, I don't really, I don't really need, need or, I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, it's funny that, um, I saw a reboot. They're rebooting Thirty Something, right? And uh, and I guess they didn't. Uh, and I played a, a character named Billy who uh, married one of the characters in the final season of the original show. And if they were to start 
with that premise, we would still be married. But I didn't hear from them. And uh, and it didn't really, it was like, yeah, okay. You know, it didn't really make any difference either way mm-hmm. uh, in, in my life at this point. And uh, I've been writing uh, narrative fiction for like the last 10 years. Awesome. I have two books out on Amazon that are very kind of dense science uh, future fiction book right um, one called How Will Be Thy Name one called um, Thy Kingdom Come and there's a mm-hmm. third book to come which if, if enough people read the first two I will eventually write the third book and then I have mm-hmm. a new novel that I finished that I'm working with an editor in New York right now about a professional golfer uh, who's getting out of prison and wants to restart his career awesome and uh, and that's uh, that's Hopefully that will be something maybe by next year this time. Awesome, and they and, can get that uh, on Amazon. No, I don't know. We'll see. We'll okay. see how the process goes. I'm working with an editor. I don't have a publishing deal with anybody right now, so okay. um, I'm just trying to get it, just get get it together. And, and um, I really enjoy doing that. I have an office here in LA, and I uh, I go there every day and work, and uh, uh, you know. It's interesting. Uh, it, it, I, that is my. That's what I like to do. I like to. I like to. Um, you know. I think. I, th- I think. I got it. Became an actor because I wanted to be a storyteller. Right. And uh, and but I was. You're always kind of a little bit, uh, ha- not hampered, but you, you, your responsibility is to be the end user of someone else's storytelling. You're finishing their story by portraying it. Right. And I always wanted to go back to be more of the source in my life. I also have a a movie that I wrote like 25 years ago, a screenplay that I wrote 25 years ago, that uh, suddenly I got a call from this producer a couple years ago, and he goes, you know, I found this. It was going to get made 25 years ago, and it didn't happen. And he said, you know, I, I remember being part of this 25 years ago, and now I want to do this. So he's actually trying to get that picture made, which is awesome. really funny. That's yeah. fun. that is I have a, funny. You know, I have multiple movies that I've written that are sitting in a drawer somewhere, but <laughs> I don't think that not too many people really care about that. So, so <laughs> it's just it's just, you know. I don't know. I've been very lucky. I, I, I consider myself to be the luckiest man alive and that I That's awesome. walked away from, you know, uh, a life that I didn't want to a life that I said I would live for 24 hours a day for free. I would be an actor mm-hmm. or a writer for 24 hours a day for free. And I got paid and, uh, and, and got to make a living out of it. And, yeah. um, I consider myself to be one of the luckiest people to, to to get to do what I want to do for the last 45 years of my life. That's so awesome. Well, congratulations on that. You did an amazing job in Friday the 13th. Um, I'm also going to keep an eye out for your books and everything, and and I, I think you're you're an, you're just an talented individual in general. So I think you you definitely had an amazing career and you have an amazing future as well. And I'm very grateful to have this interview. Well, I have many days behind me i have more days less days ahead of me than i do behind me but thank you very much scotty <laughs> you're welcome uh uh and and good luck to you too and all and all your endeavors and and thanks thank for 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 taking care of us there and uh not a problem where you, where you do your work and stuff like that not a problem thank you so much and uh, it was an